Hi guys, it's Romy here and today I'm going to be discussing self-doubt in Tourette Syndrome. So, simply put, self-doubt is where you have a little voice in your thoughts telling you that you must be faking this, it must be psychological, you're doing it on purpose, are you not trying hard enough to suppress? And this little voice is obviously very distressing to experience because you start to believe it. And I remember when I had quite bad self-doubt, I'd be thinking, what if it's my fault? What if I'm doing this for attention, I just don't know it? What if it's psychological? And self-doubt is obviously really difficult to experience and I just want to tell everyone with Tourette's Retic Disorder that if you're questioning that you're faking it, I can assure you that you're not because anyone who was wouldn't be thinking that. And also, self-doubt is actually a completely normal thing to experience with Tourette's, especially because people with Tourette's are more likely to have OCD and anxiety anyway, but self-doubt is a completely normal thing. I remember when I was talking about it to other people in the Tourette's community, I realised that quite a lot of us have this, not everyone, but quite a lot of us with Tourette's have this. And I remember one of the times I felt the most understood was when I was at a Tourette's support group and I was talking to someone about this and they said they had the exact same thing. And I think self-doubt really stems from, basically, you start to believe the judgement from others. So for example, I used to get a lot of people commenting on my videos that uh, like I was faking it and stuff and a lot of people just commented fake and um, that obviously I started to believe it because I was like, well, what if they're right? What if I am? But then I realised that, firstly, if I'm thinking that I might be faking it, I'm obviously not. It's just my anxiety, like, saying that. And also, I had this worry that what if it's psychological? But if even if it was psychological and not neurological, it still wouldn't be your fault because you can't control psychological conditions either. So, obviously, there's that. And I just want to tell people that it's a completely normal thing to experience and it's not your fault. You can't control it and you do not need to suppress. Because I remember with my self-doubt, I used to worry a lot, thinking, why am I not trying harder to suppress? What if I'm upsetting everyone? But then it's really important to know that just because you tick, you don't need to suppress it. Because the judgement from others doesn't actually mean anything to you. And people will start to accept it and you won't upset people as long as they understand. And even if they do get upset, as long as you try to explain, you know that it's not your fault. Um, all you can really do is explain and that's okay because I don't think anyone should feel that they have to suppress because it's very uncomfortable, very distressing, you can't focus when you suppress and it's obviously really uncomfortable because it explodes later as well. And another thing is when I was experiencing self-doubt I was thinking why am I ticking more in one place and not here and I used to think what if it's, what if it's like me psychologically attention seeking but then I realise it's not that is a completely normal thought to have as well because it's OCD related and a lot of people with threats have it and even though you know that you can't help it there is still this little voice in your head saying that and it's really important to know even if you do have that thought like I did ticks do get worse in some places anyway for example when I went out in public I would tick more because of the fluorescent lights the crowds and um all the loud noises and stuff and that would make me worry, like, what if this is my fault? What if I'm doing it on purpose? But I can assure you, if you're thinking that you're not, it is just a normal thing that we experience. And it is difficult to overcome, but you can overcome it. And I think the main thing that helped me overcome my self-doubt was actually speaking to other people in the Tourette's community. And I think I've met about four or five people who I've spoken to who have experienced the same thing as me. And I'm sure there are a lot of other people as well. Um... So it is actually a completely normal thing to experience. And I'm just going to ask everyone now, if you don't have Tourette's or a tick disorder, please never ask someone if they're faking it. Don't imply that they're faking it. And just be nice. Don't ask if something, like, is a tick or not. For example, I had someone who I would tick and they'd say, that was on purpose, wasn't it? I'd be like, no, why would I want to do this on purpose? I don't want to yell this stuff. It's embarrassing. And it can be painful, my motor ticks especially. So... Obviously, we're not doing it on purpose, and that thought that comes into our head is based on the judgment for others, because we start to believe it, and our sort of OCD, anxiety, and teoretic brain starts to pick up on that and just repeat it in our head, a bit like a mental tick. But I do think it's important to say that that is completely normal, and I think the most important thing for me to learn specifically was that other people with Tourette's have it, because that did make me feel less alone, and like what I was going through wasn't my fault. Um, so... Yes, please don't say no one's faking it. Please know that you're not alone in this. It's completely normal and ticks do just wax and wane anyway. So even if you can't suppress, um, you shouldn't have to. You never have to suppress. You never should have to. And also it's really not your fault for 
um, going through this and ticking. So I hope this video helps some people and I'll see you later. Bye.